All right, hello everybody and welcome back to day three of the Lifestyle Entrepreneur Summit. I am so thrilled to welcome our guest today, uh, a dear friend, somebody I've known for years and who is just crushing it on, on every front, truly embodying the, the lifestyle entrepreneur ethos and lifestyle. I'd like to welcome Jefferson Santos. Jefferson, how you doing? I'm doing I'm doing outstanding. Uh, a couple weeks ago, just had a little baby boy, so we've got two boys now. So things are going great, man. How are you? I am doing great, man. Um, congratulations on on the birth of your your new son. That's so awesome. I've been following the action and, and the pictures. So just big congratulations on that right out of the gate. You bet. You bet, man. I. I uh, I tell you, I remember when we met uh, September 2012. Uh, you know, obviously, you struck me as a really sharp guy, and you know, you'd already had your your book published, you know, in Asia. And I was like, man, that was a lifestyle entrepreneur. That's a great title. And we sort of started talking about travel and everything, and you know, became good friends already. So it's great. Absolutely. So a little a little background and context for everybody here. Actually, Jefferson is the first guest on the Lifestyle Entrepreneur Summit who's actually featured in. Uh, the forthcoming version of Lifestyle Entrepreneur. And we met uh, a couple years ago at a Brendan Burchard event. And I remember my very first impression of him. I saw him from a little bit further back in the room. And if you've ever been to one of those events, you know everybody's jumping around. And Jefferson was just going at it, like full force, <laughs> pumping his hands in the air. I was like, this is a guy who's got some energy. Uh, and and every interaction since, you know, you've always been you know, full of energy and life uplifting and, and inspirational so you know that's uh, that's my personal background and experience of, of meeting you and now you know, would love to dive into some of your story and, and figure out what it is that you're up to in the world and what you've got coming mm -hmm. so um, so I guess to start with maybe you can just share with everybody uh, what you're what you're currently up to right now which what are you working on? And uh, I know you've got a book coming out too, and we'll have some time to talk about that. But what is, what's your actual day-to-day uh, -day life and job and uh, and work picture look like now? Yeah, a um, lot of great stuff going on. Once again, I'm just number one, number one grateful for you know to be alive in this time with the great technologies that we have and all the relationships that I've created over the last you know 10, 20, 30 years. And and what I'm currently working on right now. Is yeah, I'm, I've got a you know book that I'm kind of finishing up and working on stuff for the summertime. Uh, I uh, about eight years ago I helped start a um, uh, a wholesale uh, travel company, and we're literally showing people how to have more fun, freedom, and fulfillment in their lives. I mean, I think we all love to travel and vacation and see the world, but a lot of people don't get a chance to really have the time, freedom, and money freedom to be able to do that. And so, uh, me and my partners launched a vehicle about. A little over eight years now. We're in 25 countries. We'll be in 30 countries by the end of the summer. Um, it's it's exciting, and we're doing a lot of cool things. So one of the one of the hi highlights of that is is we do a lot of volunteerism trips where we're building schools in Guatemala, helping the kids there. We've already built over 35 bottle schools in Guatemala. And a bottle school is literally we take the trash off the streets, put it in bottles, and then that's part of the insulation in the walls of these schools. And so we build over 35 of them. Exciting stuff, stuff we're doing in Africa with clean water technologies and different things like that. So that's just the volunteerism part of our travel piece. We do all the fun stuff, all the sporting events and the Super Bowls and the World Cup coming up here in Brazil and spa trips and cruises. I mean, we do all the whole gamut. And um, and so that's what I've been busy with. I, I've got a, a team of over, actually it's it's well over 150,000 now. It's getting close to 300, over 300,000 now. It's growing every day. It's crazy. And um, and so that's what's happening. You know, it's a, a you know we just had our second baby, and quick quick short story with that. And this this is this is important as and I know we got all kinds of people listening right now. That when when life happens, it's really important that you've got something set up to bring you residual income. Because here's what happened in February. My wife's in Montana with her family. I'm back in Dallas because we just got through doing a, a leadership. Uh, summit in Utah. Well, she's basically seven months pregnant. Her, her basically, she's leaking ambiotic fluid. So she's got like a third of the fluid. She goes to the hospital there in Montana. She's like, I. The doctor says you can't go anywhere. You're stuck in bed. And then my son, that's with her, 
He's not even two years old. They said, well, you can't go in the hospital because it's flu season. So she can't see our current son, and then she's bed rest in Montana, you know, which is thousands of miles away from Dallas, right? So I'm like, oh, my God. So I flew up there to Montana, you know, on a, on a whim. And what's great about, you know, being an entrepreneur is you can do whatever. I mean, you've got your own schedule, right? And so make it short. She, she got stable. The doctor said, you got a short window. If, if you can afford it, you can do a high, get a private jet, medical, medical private jet, get her on a stretcher, put her on the jet, fly her down, and get her in the hospital. And those things are really expensive. You price those things out, they're nuts. So I was able to just say, let's just do it. Let's get her down to a hospital down in Dallas is where we live. And now she's, we had the baby early there. And it, anyways, it just, it was a huge, huge blessing that we were able to have that type of income and time to be able to, to, to be able to do that. So that was crazy. Oh, that uh, behind the scenes, and I, it just sounds like a harrowing uh, couple of, of days and weeks there, but so happy yeah. that, that it all worked out. And I think it is really a testimony to having, as an entrepreneur, control over your time, your schedule, and having a sufficient passive income to be able to pull the trigger on something like that and not be racking your mind as if you know, this is going to be years worth of, of medical bills or, or even worse, having to make a decision when it comes to something that's you know, bordering on life or death, to just be able to pull the trigger. I think that's a great illustration of the benefits of entrepreneurship. And Yeah, uh, yeah, totally. I mean, it's, it, it's a decision that I made a long, long time ago. You know, and, and you know, when I was growing up, my mother had three jobs to, to, to put food on the table. We didn't have a lot of money. And, and when, when I was old enough to realize I didn't want to have to make a decision based on the lack of money, that's when I made that decision a long, long time ago. I didn't know how I was going to be successful. I had no idea. I don't even know if I even knew what success was back then. I think I was maybe five or six years old. But there was a distinct decision I made in my mind that I don't ever want to go to that situation ever again. And so because I made that decision a long time ago and I was able to obviously be teachable and learn all the stuff I need to learn, it allowed me to be the hero for my family. You know, and I think all of us that are watching right now is, you know, whatever you're going through, whatever you're learning, it's all worth it because when you make that decision and follow through on it and you start to create results, um, that allows you to be the hero for your family, for yourself, your your spouse, your your kids, whatever that is, your community, right? And so, you know, sometimes when you're we're in the valley or maybe something's not going right, the launch isn't going right or whatever project we're working on, you know, just understand that that it's a decision we made and decide means you cut off all other options, you just go forward, right? Yeah. And actually it, it leads into something I wanted to, to talk about with you today, Jefferson, is you know, the environment that you grew up in and, and your circumstances just coming up, you know, in your formative teenage years, high school years. I want to know, and I think a lot of people are curious on uh, whether or not the environment you grew up in is supportive and, and conducive of being an entrepreneur or starting a business, if you had a lot of support or uh, encouragement in that direction, or if it felt like going against the grain and just you know something that wasn't very common in your uh, either family system or social circle uh, where you grew up. So from from the start, mm -hmm. it sounds like when you made that decision, was there a lot of support and encouragement, or did it seem like a, a long shot or a stretch? What was your experience like on that? Well, you know, when I I grew up, I mean my it was me and my sister. My parents divorced when I was four, so it was me, my mom, my, my sister. And she was, my mom had three jobs putting food on the table for us. And we lived in an apartment complex, basically Section 8 housing, which is very low income type stuff. And and um, I, I did sports, you know, to stay out of trouble. And But I like sports. I love the whole team aspect. And um, but it, my mother was an entrepreneur. It was not an entrepreneur. My dad wasn't. They, they came over from Brazil in 1969, and they just basically knew how to work really hard. My mom, pretty much all she did was watch kids. Um, she had a high school education. My dad worked for the airline, started at Braniff Airlines as a baggage handler. That's back in, I don't know, 1970 or something like that. And he actually went to SMU College in Dallas uh, full-time. He was a, a bartender and a pool cleaner and a maintenance guy at the apartment complex where they lived in called The Village, and he was working for Braniff part-time, commuting back and forth from Dallas to Miami on the weekends. So, I mean... Like four, was, four jobs or so? Just yeah, with one I mean, it was just crazy, you know? And, and, and so, but one thing I did learn from my parents was work ethic. They weren't afraid to work. You know, they weren't just sitting around waiting for handouts or something like that. They were working, but they didn't have their own business. They had the jobs, and that's all they knew, Right. And now, but when I made that decision, I was just really young. I didn't, 
act on like any kind of a business or an entrepreneurial venture at that point. But I remember as I was as I got into um, business for myself, my dad, you know, he didn't know based on his awareness. He was just saying, you know, get a good job because that's all he knew. You know, hey, get a job, man. Come on, let's start trying this crazy stuff. Just get a job, get a job. You know, he kind of did that. But it, what's funny now is that he lived in Florida. Now that he's retired, he moved to Dallas to be near us to, um, you know, be around the, the grandkids, his grandkids, right? And and to kind of reconnect and spend more time with me because we didn't. He, when I grew up from ages four to whatever, he wasn't around because he remarried and all that. So. Um, so bottom line is now he's come full circle because he's seen the results, right? So so bottom line, the point is, was not in a supportive environment. You know, I did not have all these uh, people saying attaboy. But I tell you what, my mother was my biggest cheerleader. She's like, whatever you want to do, you can do it. And there's a book. It's an old book. It's called Jonathan Livingston Seagull. And it's one of the like early, early personal development books about a seagull that wants to go fly high and all this stuff and all his friends are – Joke, you know, taking pot shots at him and making jokes and say, "Yeah, you can't fly that high." And it was, it was one of those overcoming type of stories and books. I mean, it's it's an incredible book. So that was my first introduction to that, you know. And um, and and the other thing was, I have a seventh grade teacher. Her name is Miss Dooley. She's in my book, and uh, and she was the very first, one of the very first people to go. You know what, Jefferson? I I think you've got more in you. She was one of the first people to say that. She says, why don't you take this math test to see if it can get you an honors math, you know? I'm like, all right. So I took the test. I got an 88 on it. So she, I got an honors math. And from that point forward, you know, even though I wasn't an, an A student in honors math, I was with a faster crowd. I was with the smarter kids, right? So it really caused me to push myself even more. And I was never the fastest kid on the team in football or track uh, or the smartest kid in class. However, I worked really hard. I always studied extra. I went to the weight room and the gym extra time either early or later. I was always one of those kids where I knew I just needed to push myself a little bit more to to be competitive. And and I think that was a huge lesson for me that it doesn't stop when you get out of school. And a lot of people they stop that part. Mm. You know, they don't have to take tests anymore. Uh, they don't have anybody, a teacher or a coach, looking after them anymore. So they kind of stop all the things that got them to be really excellent, right? Uh, but in business, well, I mean, in the, in the world, you know, pretty much, I mean, one of the measures of a successful business, one of them, not all of them, is obviously the money that you can make, right? And then obviously the, the lives that you're impacting. And so um, so that's kind of the grade card now. Um, but there's all those other parts, though. It's not just the money, but it's the impact and all, that, all those different things. And so um, I just took that um, mentality you know, coming from school, went to the Naval Academy, went to uh, played football there, played football at TCU, and so, you know, team wealth building is a team sport. I love know? that. I love that tagline, and uh, I know we just updated everything to reflect that. And yeah, I think it's one of the first things that, that we talked about too. And it, there's a couple of things I wanted to pull out there uh, that you're saying, and that's you know such a great peek into your your formative years. It's funny, isn't it, how uh, for people that don't have a supportive or, or necessarily, you know, encouraging environment for entrepreneurship, young, everybody says, you know, why don't you get a real job and do something secure? But as you shared in your very first story, having put in the work and built uh, your business and having a team and, and recurring income actually gave you the security that you might not have had if you had just followed more traditional advice. Yeah, totally. I mean, it's kind of scary when I think about what if I had a nine to five and I had this special, I had this project that I was a lead on and I had to finish it and my wife's in the hospital and the bay. I mean, imagine all that. What if my wife had a job and she couldn't stay out that long? All of a sudden, I mean, literally that's, I mean, it's, it's events like that that can wipe people out financially if they're not set up right. Mm. Crazy. It is. And uh, and I love what you're saying about you know being a, a team player and how wealth building is a is a team sport. And I want to dive into that a little bit further. But first, I want to ask the question of so what was your actual first uh, go at business? What was your first entrepreneurial venture? And maybe you can share a little bit about what prompted that, what gave you the idea to try it, and and how it went. Was it a case of beginner's luck, or did was it sort of like a, a pie on the face? Big learning lesson experience because one of the things I want I think uh, our viewers and everybody taking part in the summit is is curious about is 
you know, is it okay to, to fail? And, and I think a lot of people before starting a business have this preconception that this is it, right? They got one shot to, uh, to make a go at it when I think I've read a statistic that like the average successful entrepreneur at the million dollar level more has tried 15 plus business ideas before getting one to stick. So what was your first experience like um, starting a business or, or going into business for yourself? Yeah, it was 1996. I was uh, transitioning from uh, the Naval Academy over to TCU, and my mother exposed me to a, a company where I was able to uh, switch people's long distance for telecommunications or whatever. And so I made a run at that because there was like, you know, talked a little bit about residual income and things like that. And so I remember um, I was making all these flyers, you know, and posting them everywhere and, and, and putting phone numbers and recordings and all that kind of stuff. And and I literally, I think I got like one customer, like literally like months and months of work. And so I just, you know, for me, you know, there, there's a learning curve that I had as far as personal development and people wanting to, you know, buy from me or whatever. And so, um, and that was back in the day when they had like pagers and stuff. So, so anyways, it, it yeah, I failed. It, it, you know, obviously I learned some stuff, but yeah, I wasn't successful. Matter of fact, several ventures. Um, you know, in telecommunications and then, you know, uh, uh, selling different things. I mean, just not successful. I mean, matter of fact, I probably went eight years in a row where I never made more than $30,000. Wow. And I spent probably me a lot more than I made, you know. So it was well, tough. Talk about, talk about persistence. <laughs> to yeah. Persistence. Yeah. Or, or if you're doing the same thing over and over, maybe it's like that uh, that Einstein quote of, you know, insanity is uh, defined by doing the same thing and expecting a different result. Right. <laughs> yeah. So, was there a, a mindset shift or a, or a change or a takeaway from those initial experiences that helped you transition into just the massive growth and and success trajectory that you're on now? If you can sort of yeah. pinpoint what was it that started to to move the needle and and change things from sort of going at this, you know, 30,000 or so a year, really pounding the pavement to get that one customer to now having a, a team. I know a lot of people's ears perked up when you said you have a, a team of well over 150,000 people. I mean, that's just phenomenal by any measure. And so what was sort of that shift that started you down the path that uh, you find yourself on today? Yeah, I think the big thing was, you know, I got exposed to personal development and, you know, your income follows your personal growth. And for me, I was not the person that people wanted to either follow or do business with. And, and I don't know exactly what that means. I was just rough around the edges. Maybe that my communication skills weren't that good. My, obviously, speaking skills or presenta presentation skills weren't that good. And I wasn't thinking of other people. I was thinking of myself. I was thinking about how could Jefferson get paid. And that's very, very, I think that's very amateurish, right? It's very, like, so short-sighted and, and short-term, and that's where I—that's where my mind was at because I never ever made money in my life, so it was all about making money, okay? And I understand that's part of business. Yeah, you got to make money, but there's a lot of other aspects that took me a while to get. <laughs> it just took me a while. So one of the things is find out what people want and then help them get it. I didn't get that. That took me years to find that out. Like find out what they want and help them get it. And then number one, if you want to lead people, number one, lead yourself first. Like be the be the message you want to bring. And like all these, like we've probably heard before, but we all heard that we all know that you know common sense isn't that common. And, mm -hmm. and for me, I had to hear it several times because, I mean, I got a thick skull, you know. And, and but when I get focused on something, I'm like a rhino, you know, a rhino, and they, they can run 40 miles an hour and they can only see like tunnel vision when they're going right. That's kind of like me. But once I get the idea and I get it, I just I run with it. And so I was running a lot with bad habits, basically. A rhino with bad habits, you know. Um, and so when I started to get refined, like, you know, any, I guess, precious metal or precious jewel, when you, when you what do they call that, smelting, right? Where they, where they, get, they, they, they get all the impurities. out all the impurities and gives yeah. you just the, the really pure element exactly. at the end. Exactly. And so I, I just see myself as that. As it's always going to be happening, right? I'm, I'm never, I've never arrived, and and that's one huge pitfall as an entrepreneur is the worst thing about success is a little bit, and that's huge because you, you get a little bit of success. More about that. What's, yeah, I mean, you know, 
you work hard and all of a sudden you know you, you get some success or some success you've never had before and you feel like you're at your peak you know but that no that's just the beginning don't mm -hmm. take your foot off the gas pedal keep mesh it all the way down and keep on going but you know what happens is we have this inter internal thermostat is let's say if I've never made thirty thousand dollars in a year and all of a sudden I make sixty Guess what happens? My thermostat kicks on. I'm going to get back down to 30. I'm going to self-sabotage myself somehow and get back down to 30. You know, and that's and I've found myself there a lot because or you just I had that extra thirty thousand dollars and be like, woo. -hoo. Yeah, I mean, I had a poverty mindset, and I, I actually had a conversation with my mom about this several years ago. I'm like, mom, we've got a poverty mindset. We spend what we make, you know, and I don't blame you for it. I'm just saying that's what we're. And she's like, yeah, you know, and I explained to her. I was just kind of share with her the things that I've learned and she's like wow you know and 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 it took me several years to get to undo that because think about that I mean a poverty mindset could come generationally generation from your family and it takes it's gonna have to be you if anybody's gonna do it to break that cycle and and just because you make a lot of money you could still have a poverty mindset because I blew through my first couple million like that <laughs> you know, wow. I've never had it, but I'm, 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 I'm spending it. You know, it's like, but now it's like, okay, all right, I've got all that out of my system. I've learned some lessons. You know, I wish I could take, you know, at least one million of that back. You know, <laughs> it's, all, it's, it's all experience, right? And so, um, but that mindset, that poverty mindset was a big thing that I had to overcome. And it was like, um, yeah, it was a big deal. So, so, so kind of to summarize that, number one, personal growth is huge. Never stop. Always keep on growing. Have childlike faith. Always look at things like they're going to turn out better than they're going to be. Don't look at things like, oh, I hope this works. That's not a good mindset, right? And so keep on going. Keep on learning. There's always another level, and there always is. So never stop pushing because there's people watching us. There's people watching you. And as soon as you slow down, it gives them permission to slow down. Hmm. So I think always want to push you. I've got tons of people watching me right now, and I'm leading them. So if I slow down, I hurt them. You know? I, yeah. No, absolutely. I know what you mean. It's I. Like, I mean, that's sort of like a core tenet of leadership, isn't it? To lead from the front, and uh, and be the one setting the pace and and leading the charge. I mean, I think that works good if you've got this sort of rhino charging mindset and you're going in the right direction then that's like an unstoppable combination mm -hmm. uh, but did you find that it took uh, once you started to get uh, and I really respect what you're saying and, and can reflect back on investing in personal development I mean we met at a personal development seminar and I've watched as you were you know, learning about all the other opportunities to learn and grow even with um, a large thriving business so I think it was inspirational to me to see not only are you already um, achieving something that many people only dream of, but that you're hardly satisfied with just stopping and staying there. And it sounds like now in hearing your story, that's something that developed more over time. If you blew through the first uh, couple of rounds of, of money you made, I met you at a point where you were firmly invested in, uh, in growing your own knowledge base and relationships. And, uh, and you know, do you feel like a momentum start to pick up and, and get into a rhythm that uh, that you either share with your team or that you reflect back the energy and, and the fact that they're watching you? And how does that play into getting, like, um, exponential growth? Because I'd, I imagine you you didn't grow a team of over 150,000 one at a time. There's got to be some momentum and leverage and inertia. And I think a lot of people are interested in, in how do you get that, and how do you yeah. uh, how do you stay focused when you're hitting, and not mm -hmm. just uh, squander it. So, yeah, well, that, yeah, it's a great great question. I think number one is you know my life is not my own, and and the thing is is that I've you know there's a lot of things I've been realized since I've been put on this earth, and that's to help other people achieve their dreams. And so, um, and it's kind of weird because it's kind of like we have dreams, right? And it's like well I want to achieve my dreams, but then I got to help other people achieve their dreams, and and I put myself in a position where I can do the same thing. I can help achieve my dreams, while you know, like Zig Ziglar said, help enough people get what they want. You get what you want, type of thing. And so, for me, um, how I get that momentum is, you know, it's 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 simply simply daily disciplines. You know, I'm listening to personal development every day. 
mainly it's on the treadmill because it's uh, you know Tony Robbins talks about net time, no extra time, get on the treadmill. I watch my iPad of a seminar, or I'm listening something on my iPhone or my phone. So here's what I've noticed: because I train on personal development, because you know we're writing stuff and doing things personal development, sometimes it's easy for me to go, you know what? Let me take a break from that. Let me just listen to some music. You know, let me just get on the you know, I'm in the car, listen to music or whatever. But here's what I've noticed: if I start listening to music, I love music. I, I listen to it. But if I start listening to music instead of personal development on a consistent basis, over it turns one day turns into three days, turns into a week. All of a sudden, my ideas get impotent, and I'm and I'm not that those little creative ideas aren't really spinning around and bouncing around in my brain. And mm -hmm. it wasn't it wasn't it just it was it was just those 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 whatever I'm listening to just jars ideas and gets you thinking, and that that spirals up, right? And, and, and one of the things that I do with my team is, you know, every Sunday night we do a, a team leadership slash training call and we're, we're teaching aspects of personal development and building their specific business. So they're getting nuggets of that. And then we have events that we do all around the world. And so there's always something going on, whether it's an event, a local event, an international event or whatever that keeps them going too because we're all human beings. We're not robots. So we need to get recharged too. And so sometimes you, the encourager needs to be encouraged, right? Yeah. And, and so I'm doing, I do a lot of cheerleading is what I'm saying. I do a lot of, I'm encouraging people. I'm letting them know they can do better. I'm challenging them that they can do better. Um, I'm at a boy patting on the back. I mean, it's all that kind of stuff. And, and I think having a team is, imp is important. So wealth building is a team sport. So if you don't have a team, it's important to start figuring out a way that one of the projects that you're doing needs to have some sort of a team aspect to it because there's a lot of camaraderie there, there's a lot of sharing, uh, shared goals that you can help everybody achieve at the same time and that's what's, that's what's really fun for me. I love that whole team thing because you know what, I'm a human being, sometimes I'm lazy, okay, and I think that uh, it, when, you, when you're working together with a team though, you, you, you might think about being lazy for a second but you're like, oh, wait a second, I've I'm accountable to that. I got to help them do this, and so all of a sudden it's like, hey, you know, I, I'm, res you know, I got to be responsible. You know, that's a great topic there, right? That, I mean, we could talk about that for hours. Responsibility, right? The accountability of of other people as expectations, especially if you're responsible for their payroll and their livelihood. I mean, yeah. that's uh, I think that raises the bar a lot higher for wanting to just slack off versus. You know, summoning the energy to to go forward and and make it happen. Yeah. And I certainly, you know, I'll just share with everybody a, a story. I went to one of your events uh, in in California here, like last year or so. And the thing I noticed was, for every moment that you weren't on the stage, because you were the main speaker, it was all about talking to the other team members, patting people on the back, encouraging them, and just uh, my experience was that every second that you weren't in the front of the room, you were not necessarily making yourself the center of attention you're really externally focused on on helping and, and serving everybody around you so mm -hmm. yeah, that was yeah. one thing that uh, that I took away I wanted to share with you on this call yeah thanks man. that was that was a fun day that was fun yeah <laughs> that sure was and you know you you touched on uh, on something with the treadmill and listening to personal development actually I'll probably start doing that a lot more cuz I just I listen to you know loud music and it gets me pumped up when I work out but Maybe I'm missing out on some great new ideas, uh, but I wanted to ask about, you know, what relationship do you see between your own health and fitness uh, and discipline on on the health front, and how that plays into being able to grow your business and have the energy to support now, you know, a global team. And I think that's one of the questions I'm asking uh, all of the presenters here because I'm finding more and more as I'm uh, investing in my own fitness and and health how much carryover effect there is to the other aspects of life, namely, you know, your business. So, uh, I mean, you're in, you're in pretty good shape. Of course, you, you came up playing football and everything, but how do you see now the relationship between your health and fitness and having enough energy to be productive and, uh, and keep moving the ball down the field uh, on the business front and with your family as well? Yeah, I mean, I think energy is important, you know, and I think, um, you know, making sure I get enough sleep and eating the right things. Now, am I a perfect eater and a perfect sleeper? No, but I, it is it is on my mental dashboard a lot. And, you know, uh, you and I took a bunch of Vegas sports shakes, you know, uh, I did a little shameless plug for those guys. I mean, that 
the Vegas Sport line is just awesome. And so a lot of natural plant-based, you know, stuff that's very good for you. And so I think that, you know, number one, you know, if you're if you're a million dollar thoroughbred racehorse, what are you going to put in that racehorse? You're not going to feed them Snickers and Red Bull, you know? And so you got to put good stuff in. And so I think that, you know, movement, moving around, I, I usually, I do all my personal stuff in the morning. I have a personal trainer. I work out uh, with my personal trainer. I've, I've been working out with him now on and off since 2003. And, but we have a blast. We're having fun. We're joking around and we're working out and he challenges me, you know? And I think that for me, at this point, because I'm not in a competitive sport anymore, you know, and there's not game day on Saturday and, you know, all that kind of stuff, I, I, for me, I need that push from a personal trainer, you know, because I went to the gym and, and I, I've done CrossFit, I did CrossFit for like three years and stuff, and that push was, it was really, really good. But going to the gym by yourself sometimes, I get bored, I get pretty bored with that, you know, so it's fun to either obviously go out with a workout uh, buddy or something like that, um, but, uh, I just I just thought about Mike Chang's workout buddy song on YouTube. It's hilarious. You gotta check that out. Anyways, <laughs> plug for him. Anyways, um, so so but I think that having you know a coach or a mentor in different areas of your life is very important, right? And so uh, my buddy Scott is he's my he's my personal trainer. And so um, and then as far as eating stuff, uh, you know, I do moderation. I mean, eighty percent of the time I'm eating good. You know, twenty percent of the time, hey, I love my pizza. You know, I love to. You know, have a little dessert, you know, my cheesecake and carrot cake and flan. I just had some flan last night. Woohoo! That's good stuff. Um, <laughs> and, uh, you know, so I'm, a, I'm a regular person, you know. I, I just, but I think that I'd rather be, I'd rather be energized than not energized, you know. And um, I think that when we feel good, we, 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 um, we produce more, right? When we feel good, we feel like doing stuff, right? Yeah. I mean, absolutely. And and doing it first thing in the morning, too, has been a, a big game changer for me. Now, like, I think for people that don't have that consistent routine, um, I definitely recommend starting by doing it first thing in the morning and getting over that initial hump. Because then the rest of the day, you're sort of charged up physically. And, uh, and you know, if this has been your experience, too, I feel much less, like, nervous energy and way more, like, concentrated focus after oh, yeah. just uh, getting it, leaving it all on the field in the gym, and then being able to focus on everything else like 100%. Yeah, it's good. I mean, th things creep up, especially as as an entrepreneur life is concerned. I mean, things progress during the day that could could obviously no, need a lot of your time. So I just yeah, get that personal stuff done in the morning, get the blood flowing, get the oxygen going, and you feel good about yourself. Get those endorphins going after you work out. You feel really good about yourself, and you're ready to take on the day. But you just got to get that. I mean, even if you have to put your workout clothes in the middle of the room right in front of your door, you know, <laughs> set yourself up to win. Sleep in your workout clothes if you have to. Whatever you have to do, just get it moving. And, I mean, it'll 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 help big time because all right, when I was uh, – when I had to go up to the hospital up to Montana and be there for four or five days with my wife because the whole baby situation, I wasn't working out at all. And I could feel it. My energy was down. I felt like you know a lot of angst or whatever. It just it was just it was crazy. And so um, sometimes you just got to get in there and throw some steel around and run on the treadmill, you know, and just let off some steam. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. And uh, you know, it brings up another interesting point because like before, I imagine you got into that health and fitness routine for football and for competitive sports. But how much, and now we've talked about how important it is to be, uh, have a lifestyle of health and fitness and, and an active lifestyle, as well as eating healthy. But how much, uh, if any, of your time playing football is carried over to the business side? Because I imagine there's some analogies between a team sport, competitive, maybe a different focus in terms of now you're like competing to help the most people or grow your team the fastest. But do you look at uh, what other you know, habits uh, and carryovers do you have or routines that you're in that really help uh, keep you on track and moving forward day to day, week to week, and month to month? Yeah, I mean, well, I mean, from football, I mean, the thing is, is like you, you got to be the quarterback of, of your team. And a quarterback, if you're not familiar with football, is I know we got a lot of people watching this, is that's the guy that gets the ball hiked to him and he has a chance to eat off to somebody to go run it or he throws the ball or he can keep the ball and go run with it. And so you're the quarterback of your team. And so you've got to be the in 
inspiration. You've got to be the driver. I mean, Jeff Bezos, uh, founder of Amazon, he's always like, today is day one. Like, every day. It's like 10 years later. Today is day one. You know, you got to you got to be that light for everybody, whether you feel like it or not, you know. And, you know, they, it's, I heard this quote one time. It's like, amateurs complain, but professionals do it with a headache. You know, you just got to keep on doing it, you know. And so, you know, I remember in football, if one person messed up, we all had to run sprints. And it, because it was a team, and you know, yeah, we all get pissed off and be like, "Oh man, he messed up. Why do we have to run?" Well, because we're on the team, okay. Even if somebody that's sitting on the bench and they win the and the team wins the Super Bowl, guess what? That person on the bench still gets the Super Bowl ring, okay. And that's the thing. And and it, a little little story about rings is at the Naval Academy. The year after I left, they won a bowl game, okay. And they got they got a big bowl ring, so I didn't get a bowl ring then. And, and prior to that, I've, every football team I was a part of pretty much was a losing team. So I was like, I had this complex. Am I a bad luck charm or something? <laughs> you know. And uh, so, so then I then I transferred to TCU, and TCU I played there. And then the year after I left TCU, they won a bowl game. And almost every year after that, they won a bowl game. I mean, it's been crazy. And so I never, ever, ever got a bowl ring ever. And that was for a for a young man. To play Division One college sports, you won a bowl ring. That's a, that's a signification of I've arrived. I've played football. I got a winning team. I never got one. The cool thing about the business that I created and everything is we give out rings for people that earn six figures, seven figures, and stuff like that. So I got my ring, and the and the significance of the ring isn't the ring. It's how many people I had to help to get this ring. I love that. And, and, and it was nice just that, nice that it came full circle that uh, it may not be the Naval Academy ring or the TCU, but you ended up getting the ring that really counts, which is being able to make that much of an impact and, and contribution on other people's lives. Yeah, yeah, it's been it's it's been incredible. And uh, and as far as habits are concerned, you know, uh, you know, I I have a productivity sheet, you know, from from my good good old high performance stuff, and I write down you know things that I got to do the next day. Usually, I do this the night before. So I know what, what I need to do the next day. Who, who do I need to follow up with? Who am I waiting for? And if I go into my email box, number one, I don't go in the morning, but if I have to, I just I jump in and do a search for a name of the person I'm waiting to hear back from, and then I'm out. It's like a Navy SEAL team. I get in the email box, and I get out, right? Sniper <laughs> strike like, right in there. Right, it's like, bam. I was like, go in Facebook, get over I need, and then get out. It's like it's a time suck. I mean, all that craziness is time is a time suck. And so, so I, I look at that as is an, I look at some of those things, uh, those devices as an enemy to get my time away from my focus, my my goal up for my life. And so it's so easy to like like Brennan says, br browser blackout. You know, you all of a sudden you're going, you're scrolling down the the Facebook feed for. <laughs> you look at the clock; it's like three hours later, right? And so, um, so yeah. And what did you actually learn, or what did you actually accomplish, other than you know seeing some cat pictures? Yeah, right. Exactly. Um, so yeah, so that that thing really helps. But that getting that personal stuff done, you know, also you know I have breakfast with with my son, and then and then you know, usually I mean because since I work from the house, I see my my kids a lot. Um, well, actually, not my not both of them because one of them is still in the hospital right now. But when he gets older, I'll be able to see him all the time. But but Harrison, uh, our, our our first son, I see him all the time. He knows who I am. You know, he's been on okay. At when he was 20 months old, he's been on already 42 flights. Wow, I think when the so when, I, when, when lifestyle entrepreneur went to print, it was something like 22 flights. Uh -huh. so now it's just getting close to like triple digits, isn't it? I know, right? Maybe you could talk a little bit about you know the lifestyle uh, that you currently have. I mean, I'm imagining you're going with them on all these trips. So if that's 20, 30, 40 trips over the last couple of years, uh, do you still enjoy traveling as much as you used to? And you know, what are some of your favorite travel experiences and, and destinations that you find yourself wanting to go back to? Time and time. Sure. I mean, what's what's great about having an international business is I'm able to, um, uh, been able to literally travel around the world. You know, with my wife, sometimes with our son, and you know, we want to world school our kids. We want to show them the world versus going to school and learning about it. We want to show them, you know, all the great places around the world. And and but yeah, literally we take one or two vacations a month. Um, because our business is, you know, is in the travel business, and we're doing stuff online, and we can be anywhere in the world and do it. And we've created that team aspect that we've been talking about that have that residual income. So we, 
literally have that time to travel. And, and, and that's one thing that um, I think is a big, big distinction as all of us that are listening to this, whether this is months from now or years from now, is you've got to figure out a way to where you're not the quarterback uh, all the time forever, right? You've got to be able to, to get other people doing the things that you would do and, and, and be in a vehicle, and there's several different products you could be doing. Be, get a vehicle that allows people the, the same opportunity as you to make the same amount of money, if not more than you. That's how you, that's how you attract and retain leadership. That's very, very important. And so I look at you know, what I'm doing. Like on one end, there's becoming an entrepreneur. And that's from scratch. You've got to develop the branding, the colors, the name, the logo, you know, the concept, right? And then on the other end is a job. You, know, you already know what the title is and the role, and you get your own post-it notes and pens, right? And everything's done for you, and they tell you what you're going to get paid, right? So there's two aspects of that, right? What I'm doing is kind of in the middle. I've developed a project, I've, I've developed a compensation, I've done all that, but there's still that freedom for people to go out and make as much money as they want to make. And I think that for, for a lot of people, they like that because it scares the crap out of them sometimes to be a, just an entrepreneur like from the scratch, right? It's a chance to kind of, kind of be a, almost like an, an employeepreneur or a way that they can still have their job and have something else going on too because as we all know, man, to have your own... Uh, uh, business on the internet, you're talking about you know you got to understand marketing funnels and opt-in pages and and video and editing and all this stuff and, you, and if you got to have money to hire the people to help you do that or you got to figure it all out on your own and then there's all the implementation stuff. I mean that that I'm realizing all that stuff and it's crazy, right? So so it's it's important to have you know some other irons in the fire so to speak, you know other vehicles that can generate some residual income quickly. Right, so you're not the one doing everything. I mean, and that's and that's so key. So back to lifestyle. You know, we love beaches. We love Turks and Caicos and St. Martin and Mexico. I mean, Mexico is the resorts there are getting better and better. You know, it's not the Mexico that it was 20 years ago or 15 years ago. I'm talking about there's some nice resorts there that are on their own little plot of land, not not in the in, not in the Cancun hotel zone or the. Puerto Vallarta, I mean, it's just really nice. Puerto Vallarta and, 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 and stuff like that and Cancun, but south of Cancun, Maya Riviera and Playa are just great places. Um, we love Europe. We love sitting and just people watching, you know, sipping on vino and eating some pizza in Italy. I mean, you can never go wrong there, right? And uh, I remember one time we were in Belgium and we went to get – we took a train from, I think it was Amsterdam to Belgium. We had Belgian waffles and we had mussels in Brussels with some beer, right? Got to <laughs> do that, right? And then we had, um, and then what did we do? And then we went to this chocolate, this chocolate place, chocolatier or whatever they call it, right? Chocolatier, is that what it is? Yeah. And we picked out all these chocolates and we sat there. We ended up almost eating the whole box, you know? So pretty much in Europe, you just walk, then you eat, and you walk for 30 minutes and you eat. Because there's all these great cafes and things to do, right? So, I mean, we love that. And we just got back from Asia, which is another great place to eat all kinds of crazy food and have fun there, too, and we were in uh, Hong Kong and uh, Phuket and, and also Singapore. So I think that we don't have a favorite place. We just have, I mean, we just really enjoy the places that we're at, I guess. I mean, because it's the people that you're with and the experiences that you have, you know. And I mean, we, we, we got engaged in Israel right there on the Via de la Rosa. I mean, just, it, it's just a dream life. When I, every time I think back, we're so grateful for it. But we designed it. I wanted that, so I went out and we did it. And and but the next level is it's not just that we did it; we're helping thousands of other people do the same thing, which is which is that's where that significance oh, that, comes. That's from. beautiful. And yes. you know, yes. I think one of the oh yeah, go ahead. One of the, one of the themes I'm picking up on here is like this balance between working hard and having a, a diligent, structured schedule. If you're doing a personal training every morning, and then you've got your productivity sheet of what you need to knock off throughout the day. But then, uh, if you're doing a vacation or two every month, uh, being able to, uh, do you get to unwind on those, or are you still thinking about uh, business, or are these trips that involve other people in your business, or is it really just time for, for you and your family? And it's how do you, a combination of both. Sometimes yeah. there's vacation just with family. Sometimes it's more of a work vacation. But the thing is, is there's, not, there's no distinction between work and play when you're in the travel business, you know what I mean, and, and doing what we're doing. And so... Um, it's um, 
yeah, it's a mixture of all of it, you know. And so what we, we might have, you know, one family vacation, you know, every three months, you know, and then we got work sprinkled in through there. But see, you you might have a couple of days of just doing nothing, and then we have some a little bit of work stuff, and then a couple more days of doing nothing. Like when I was in Asia, we were there for almost two weeks, I think, and so I did a one day training in Hong Kong. The rest of the time there was fun. Went to Phuket. All there was fun. And then the next Saturday, I did a one-day training in Singapore. So I literally only trained two days out of the 14 days. So the other days were either travel days or just hanging out, you know, hanging out in Thailand and eating food in Singapore and stuff like that. So, I mean, it wasn't really that bad. And what was I doing working? I was doing personal development training on stage to a bunch of excited people. So that was cool, right? <laughs> that wasn't really work. <laughs> I mean, truly, like living the the dream here, and uh, I'm sure we have some people saying here on the on the chat thread that that's so powerful. What an inspirational story! Uh, I need to hear this. Blessings to you. Um, very inspiring and engaging story with great energy. So people are definitely resonating with uh, with with what you're saying here, and even. You know, I get the opportunity to travel a lot and hearing about all the places that you go and how frequently it's like, wow, you know, time to up my game another level too. Hey, well, you're hey, you're not too bad yourself, man. I, I see you going to Norway and you're in like <laughs> last week. I mean, hey, it's good stuff too, man. It's exciting. <laughs> yeah, I definitely can't complain, but I totally admire your your approach uh, on like really keeping things going on the health and fitness, the family front, the business front. But actually incorporating in the the lifestyle that you truly want to enjoy, uh, and honestly, you know, having been to one of your events and stuff, it's not like oh now it's time for work. It's like you said, you get to get up and inspire and instruct hundreds or or literally thousands of people. So, I think that's. Uh, would you say that at this point, Jefferson, you've 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 hit or exceeded? Um, what you the largest vision say 20 years ago of what you thought was was possible? Yeah, I've I've exceeded what I thought was possible, but obviously as we as we hit these milestones, all of a sudden we our vision gets stretched some more, you know, and 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 you know, it's just incredible to be able to surround myself with great people like yourself uh, and like the other people that we've met, our friends in the in the business world that have stretched our vision even more of what's possible, right? And I think that it's just it's great to see other examples out there, and it just really raises our ambition level and raises our aspiration level. So it's like, all right, well, if it's out there, let's go hit it. Let's 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 make it happen. And so, um, yeah, it's it's been really cool. And now it's just like, I'm grateful every day. I'm like, wow. It's like, okay, if I'm still on the earth, then you know God's got a plan for me, and I'm I, I still there's still more stuff that I need to do. And that's what I think every day. If I'm still here, there's things that I have to do to go keep on serving the world and keep keep this pay it forward mentality going. You know what I mean? I, I love that approach, and I think that's a great mindset that everybody can take away. Is if you're ever wondering, you know, do I have something to do today, or do I have something to do this week? If you're alive, if you're if you're getting out of bed in the morning, and the answer is most likely yes. <laughs> so uh, I like that not resting on your laurels approach and really I think you're you're right on by saying that as you achieve more and and realize bigger levels of success that the overall scope and vision of what is possible and what you want to do next comes into more clear focus mm -hmm. uh, which sure. is a great way to segue into what you're up to now and what your your vision is moving forward I know that you just put the finishing touches on a book and I uh, would love to hear about the book itself and and what from the position you're at now with you know team and six figures income in the seven figures what's the next exciting challenge that you see for yourself and and your business uh, and or family yeah sure um, well here's what's funny you know I was we were at experts Academy way back when and and I've you know created some residual income and things were going great so I had this great lifestyle and then all of a sudden you know, I see all this work that you have to do to write a book, you know, and they get all the things in place. I'm like, man, I'm just creating a lot of extra work for myself, you know, and I'm like, well, you know, it's worth it because Brennan, you know, Brennan challenged me. He's like, hey, you need to go out and get your message out to the world. Don't don't be selfish. And I was like, ooh, you know, I got convicted, right? So I'm like, all right, so I uh, got to get that out. So, so as I started putting this thing together, you know, I was just like, okay, I want to write a book about, you know, how to design the life that you want. And so I arrived at a title 
The title is Higher Life Design, Arriving at Your Intended Destination Healthy, Wealthy, and Happy. And it's a straight up personal development book to help you get from where you're at to where you want to go. And have frameworks in there. You know, I've got a lot of a lot of travel terminology in there. I've got, you know, uh, you know, takeoff, flight, and landing. It's the books in kind of three sections, you know. I've got a manifesto at the end. Um, it's got a travel a of, theme running through it. I, yeah, yeah. And so so I give you some things and some stories in there that 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 will really help you help you push through and help you design the life that you want and the thinking behind how you have to think to be that person to design the life that you want you know and 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 so for me I was able to get my story out talk about my struggles talk about my challenges but then talk, also talk about how I got through that and, and then my successes and then a lot of a lot of analogies and stories back in you know the framework that I put together you know I talk about the you know how Zig Ziglar talks about your your um, uh, your attitude is determined by your altitude right mm -hmm. he talks about that well I flipped that and I talked about your altitude, which is elevating your mindset, will actually determine your attitude. So it's called the attitude equation. I talk about that in the book because that's kind of been a missing subject for a while is attitude. And I get in there. I talk about the first class formula and the power of being in first class. And I was it, there's a lot of fun stuff that I talk about in there. But bottom line is, I think I feel it's one of those books that hasn't been out in a while. It's one of those books that's like, here you go, here's what you do, and here's a very simple way and digestible, understand it, and then at the end of it, you're like, all right, I'm going to go design my life. I'm excited, you know, and you've got some tools there too because obviously I'm going to create some other tools beyond that to really help people design the life that they want because there's a lot of uh, people out there that they sell the picks and shovels, but they're not actually giving you the thing to actually go do it with. So, yeah, I'll be teaching, but also be giving you some things to actually go do that will generate that for you. So that was one thing that I had a little bit of a, of a challenge with or an issue with is I've been to all these seminars and I've bought, in, I mean, probably hundreds of thousands of dollars in products, you know, wow. in person, you know, and because I'm like, okay, we're the gold nuggets. And I'm, and, I'm, and I'm realizing, okay, most of them are at this higher level but none of them are actually giving you a vehicle or actually getting into the detailed minutia of actually how to do it. There's, just a, there's not a lot of that out there, and so you just have to kind of muddle through it and figure it out yourself. And so that's one thing that I want to do is, is, is beyond the book is, is really get into that specific thing because, you know, hey, I've done it. And, this, and we all know there's, there's, there's real people out there, but there's, there's also some fake people out there, right? They, they're shooting great videos, but they haven't really done squat but they've got great marketing. But guess what? I'm like, I was like, you know what? I've generated a lot of results. I need to get my act together and get my marketing together so I can get my message out there. And say, hey, I'm a real person who's done it. I mean, let me teach you how to do it. And that's one of the reasons why I put the book together. That's one of the reasons why, you know, uh, I'm promoting uh, the travel business that I'm doing because everybody likes to travel. Who doesn't want to travel, right? And what if you can make a difference at the same time and earn money? So that's that's an exciting thing. But, and one of the reasons I'm thrilled to have you uh, as part of the summit here, because I know that with the book coming out, and you're almost shifting gears a little bit to to being, a, you know, a thought leader in in and of your own right, independent of the business, perhaps, but of course supported by your success in it. And I think people always, well, should maybe not always want, but people always want to learn from somebody that's that's gone through. Uh, the hard times, struggled a little bit, and ultimately found the key, and then realized that success uh, in their own life. I think that should be a, a prerequisite before somebody becomes, you know, a guru or a thought leader, is to actually have accomplished those results. So that's something you've done, you know, probably ten years beyond what is even necessary to write a great self-development book. And I just can't wait to read the whole thing, having seen uh, little bits and pieces along the way as you've been developing it. It sounds like it's going to be just phenomenal. I'm excited. It's going to be fun. And uh, what, what was the title of that again, Jefferson? Uh, the title is Higher Life Design, Arriving at Your Intended Destination, Healthy, Wealthy, and Happy. Awesome. And is there, a, is there a place where we can find out more about it, or is there a, a, a sample chapters or pre-release that uh, anybody can get their hands on? Well, I've got, I, I put together um, a, a kind of a mini success course that talks about a lot of different success concepts and mindsets and different things that I've put together. And um, actually that link is at fun 
freedomnow.com because we all want to have fun and freedom, right? So funfreedomnow.com and uh, and that right there will give you some a lot of free great training. I talk a little bit about my travel thing like on the third or fourth video or something like that, but it's going to give you a lot of great content like immediately. And um, and then that right there once once more stuff starts coming out with about, about the book then I'll that'll be the list there too that I'll update everybody on when the book's coming out. It'll come out in the summertime, but I got some some other things I'm going to be releasing way before that fairly soon. But yeah, that's how you can kind of stay plugged in there, get some good stuff like right now that I'm that I'm teaching, and that'll really really add value to your life right now, your life and your business and your relationships as well. Yeah, funfreedomnow.com for sure. Funfreedomnow.com. I just put that on the the chat roll for everybody that's checking this out and I'm going to go take a look as soon as we're done here cool. to, to learn more about that. Jefferson, thanks so much for taking the time to come on and, uh, and share your story and let us know what you're up to. I, I know I learn something new every time I talk to you and, uh, and it's just so encouraging to, uh, to see you continuing to push the boundaries and of personal growth, business growth, what you've done with your family, it's honestly, you're just a great role model and I want to acknowledge you uh, as publicly as possible for that while I've got you here. <laughs> well, I appreciate that, uh, Jesse, and, and I tell you what, I think the world of you, I know you're moving mountains, you're doing huge things. It's just an honor for me uh, that you've allowed me to be on your webinar series here as part of your book launch in, in, in the U.S. here. I'm just so excited about what you're doing and what you stand for, and I look forward to many, many um, projects that we'll do together in the future and a lot of people's lives we're going to impact together, so it's going to be awesome. Absolutely, brother. And uh, everybody, again, Jefferson is one of the featured lifestyle entrepreneurs in the forthcoming version of my book, Lifestyle Entrepreneur. So if you've been inspired by this story and, and you want to learn more about what Jefferson's up to, definitely go over to funfreedomnow.com and, uh, and keep an eye out. Of course, everybody here will get to check out Lifestyle Entrepreneur so you can see uh, my take on, on Jefferson and, and his lifestyle. It's just totally inspirational. And uh, Jefferson, do you have time for a quick question that's coming in here from the from the chat roll? Of course. Yeah, we have uh, Catherine who's saying, I'm wondering what uh, Mr. Santos has to say for folks with disabilities who are just starting out. Um, so I think she's starting out just starting out in business, but uh, any specific words for somebody that has a disability or handicap of some sort getting started in uh, in business? Well, I think that... A handy, I mean, there's two kinds of handicaps. There's physical handicaps and there's mental handicaps. And if you're on this webinar, you're not mentally handicapped. You might, maybe something physical is going on, but that has no bearing on what you can achieve. You know, so as long as, as you've got the mindset right and you're determined to make it happen, that's even a better story. Because think about, I mean, the, the position that there's a reason. I know it might not sound it doesn't make sense right now, but there's a reason that something's going on physically. And that's just another reason for you to push forward because you're you're looking at a world from your perspective that that's not my perspective, it's not Jesse's perspective, but your perspective. And I think that um, you have an advantage over us because it's your perspective. So you can bring some value to the earth to the world that we can't because of the situation that you're in. But hey, you're definitely not mentally handicapped, so just all guns blazing, put the full throttle going. Figure out what your passion is and just dive in with it. I give you permission. Who would give you permission to go do that? That's a great answer, and I like how you segmented out of being not mentally handicapped. If you're here on a you know a personal development and inspirational broadcast, it's definitely a good first step towards uh, achieving your goals and dreams as an entrepreneur. And that was a great answer. Thanks, and I hope that uh, helped you there, Catherine. And so Jefferson, you know, we could talk to you all day, but uh, but we're getting close to time here. So I want to know if you got any final parting words or uh, an inspirational quote that you'd like to share. Sure. I, I, yeah, you bet. As, as we wrap up here, guys, I want to I want to encourage you. Is you know, <clears throat> there's a book called from John Eldridge called Wild at Heart, and in that book he talks about um, the eagle, and the eagle was designed with all the right parts to soar. It's 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 desire. It's destiny is to soar. So basically, we're born with a desire implanted into us. Um, for an eagle, it's to soar. So it's designed with all the right parts to soar. So its destiny is to soar. Okay, you know, a tiger is 
it wants to hunt. He or she's designed with big teeth, big paws, you know, with all the right parts to go hunt. It's different from a house cat, right? A house cat has different parts than a tiger, right? And so as a human being, we're all born with a desire to succeed. And we're all born with the right parts to succeed. So our destiny is success. And I'll prove it to you. We're born with five things. Number one, we're all born, every successful person, and, and all of us have been born with the same thing. Number one, the, the, the gift of persistence. Show me any two or three year old that doesn't have persistence, right? Number two, uh, we've got the gift to uh, uh, adventurous spirit, okay? Um, we got an adventurous spirit. Like how many of us tried to, to, to jump off the top bunk and fly or see what a worm tastes like or what dirt tastes like? We all did that. Well, most people did that with little kids, right? We all have the gift to get over it, okay? We, get, we fall down, we skin our knee, we cry for a little bit, but we get up, but we live to fight another day. We're all born with that, right? And then, uh, and then we're all born with the, with, with the gift of faith. I mean, think about this, you know, a lot of people, you know, they believe in Santa Claus when they're little kids. I mean, those are the good old days. The Easter Bunny who laid chocolate plastic eggs, right? Well, plastic eggs with chocolate in them, right? I mean, the Tooth Fairy. Those were the good old days where we had the childlike faith. We're all born with that. Every successful person has persistence, okay, has an adventurous spirit, has childlike faith, has the gift to get over it, okay? I forgot what the fifth one was. It'll come back to me some other time, but th those are those four things, okay? But we're all designed with that. Okay, as little babies, little kids, we're all designed with those things. The, the question is, is what are you trading it in for? Keep those things. We all have them. We're all born with them. You have them. Just don't squash it down because you're trying to put a, a face for on to satisfy somebody else. Be yourself because we, 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 we're born with those things. We, we have it. And so it's, now it's time to go out there and voice our message. And but we're built with all the right parts to succeed. It's just a matter of you going out and implementing it. So that's my encouragement to you. Uh, I really, really appreciate once again everybody's time and listening us talk. And I hopefully you got some value out of our uh, of our session today. Uh, uh, thank you so much for sharing that last answer. I'll say Catherine has responded saying that was amazing. No one has ever said that to me before. Usually it's a judgment, but that was just great. So. Just wanted to reflect back the uh, real-time impact that you're making on the people taking part in this broadcast. Thank you. And thank I you. want to thank you one more time, Jefferson, for joining us on the Lifestyle Entrepreneur Summit. Such an inspirational story, such an inspirational person. Uh, proud to call you a friend. And, thank you, my friend. And uh, and we'll talk to you soon, brother. All right, Take see care. you later. Bye-bye okay, now. Bye.